Okay, George Diamond here. We're uh, continuing uh, our, our, on to our next flipped classroom video. Now we're in the process of look, looking at evaluating limits analytically, so using, using algebra, using some of our algebra skills. Now we want to finish up this, this, this section here uh, with uh, evaluating some trigonometric limits, some trig limits. Now to, to simplify, to evaluate some, some of our, our trig limits, some of our trig problems, there are two special trig limits that you need to know. Right, so you want to kind of commit these to memory. Okay, and here's the first one. So anytime you're working a trig problem and you come across sine x over x, and you're finding the limit as x approaches zero. Now that's, that's, that's particular to this particular limit. The limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x. Now anytime you see sine x over x, the limit as x approaches zero, this will always evaluate to one. So that's going to evaluate to one. So anytime you're trying to find the limit as x approaches zero of a trig of a trig problem, all right? And if you can get sine x over x, or even x over sine x will also be equal to one. So that also works for x over sine x. So either one uh, will, will evaluate to one. So it makes it a lot easier if you can recognize that special trig limit in your trig problem. Sometimes you may have to do a little bit of rearranging using some of your identities or something, you have to do a little bit with the problem to get sine x over x, but if you can, we're going to replace it with 1. Now, the next special trig limit, so the limit as x approaches 0, of 1 minus cosine x over x. Now, this is uh, our second special trig limit, and this will always evaluate to 0. So make sure you have these down. Now, once again, just to review, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. That's also true for x over sine x, it's reciprocal. And the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is 0. All right, so 1 minus cosine x over x is 0. So keeping that in mind now, let's take a look at uh, several problems, several trick problems, and let's see if we can evaluate the limit on a few of these. Uh, so let's start off with problem number 1. Try this problem here. And we're going to see if we can evaluate each limit. I'm going to start off with uh, limit as x equals x approaches 0 of sine 4x over x. Now you can almost see sine x over x here, except this is sine 4x over x. Uh, now, if we had, now I know sine x over x is 1, so, so sine 4x over 4x should also be 1. So what we're going to do is I need a 4 on the bottom of this fraction. I need sine 4x over 4x. That will evaluate to, uh, should simplify to 1. So what we're going to do is, I want to multiply this fraction by 4 over 4. All right, and what we end up with now is 4 times sine 4x over 4x. Now, do you see the sine 4x over 4x? Okay, that's a, one of our special trig limits. Okay, this is going to simplify out to 1. So you end up here with 4 times 1, which is 4. So this particular uh, trig limit should be 4. All right, now you can, but like I said, you've got to get sine 4x over 4x to have the, uh, uh, to have the special trig uh, relationship there. So let's try problem number 2. Let's see if we can, uh, how we can simplify the, the second problem. Try this one here. Now we got the limit as x approaches zero of three minus three cosine x. And I can almost see one minus. I know one minus cosine x over x as x approaches zero is zero. So uh, uh, so let's make do a little uh, a little bit of work here. Uh, in the numerator, you got three minus three cosine x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor three off each of those terms. That gives us one minus cosine x x. Now, can you see 1 minus cosine x over x? That's 0. So we end up here with 3 times 0, which is 0. So this particular limit is going to evaluate to 0. You just have to factor the 3 off, and you can see the 1 minus cosine x over x. And the limit as x approaches 0, if 1 minus cosine x over x is 0, you have 3 times 0, which gives you 0. All right, let's try another one. Right. 
we go. Try problem number three. We got cosine x. The limit as x approaches zero of cosine x tangent x over x. Now, mind, now looking at the, this particular problem, somehow I need to get sine x over x. I don't think there's going to be any way we're going to use one minus cosine x over x in this problem. So if we're going to simplify this, we're going to use sine x over x to do it. So here's what we're going to do. You see the tangent x, I know the tangent is sine over cosine. So we're going to rewrite this as cosine x times sine x over cosine x. So instead of tangent x, we're going to rewrite it as sine over cosine over x. Let's see what happens. Now you end up with cosine x times sine x over cosine x. Now the cosine x's cancel out. And we end up with <coughs> sine x over x, which is equal. So the limit of this function should be 1. Now, I knew we had to use sine x over x somewhere here, and uh, that we get by, by rewriting the tangent x. So if you've got the tangent, and a lot of these particular problems, you know, if you see tangent, you're going to have to rewrite it typically as sine over cosine maybe. Okay, let's try some, another one. Let's try problem number 4. Now we're just doing some practice problems. Now this time we got tangent squared x over x. Now, if we're going to evaluate this problem somehow, we're going to get sine x over x in there somewhere. Uh, this particular problem, I don't think that we would be able to do 1 minus cosine x over x. But to start us off, let's rewrite the tangent x again as sine squared x over cosine squared x over x. Now, we're going to write the x as x over 1. So what we have is one fraction divided by another fraction. Sine squared uh, x over cosine x divided by x over 1. Now, a fraction divided by a fraction, let's take the top fraction, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. Okay, this will give us sine squared x over cosine squared x times 1 over x. Now, I can almost see sine x over x. Going to get sine in the numerator here, uh, x in the denominator there. So I can kind of just a little rearranging here, I think. Uh, I think would work. So I'm going to kind of expand this and multiply by 1 over x. And this will, uh, uh, as you multiply these, will give us uh, sine x. Now you have sine squared, which means you have two sines. So sine x times sine x over. Uh, let's see, you want to put the x first. It'll be x times. Now cosine squared means you got two cosines. So cosine x times cosine x. Now can you see sine x over x? Okay, well that's, that's what we're looking for. So kind of rearranging this, we would have sine x over x now times so times x would be sine x I guess erase that so sine x over x and then sine x in the numerator of the other fraction and then cosine x times cosine x now this right here goes to 1 so let's use direct substitution on the rest of it so we'll end up with 1 times uh, sine 0 Cosine 0 times cosine 0. Now, I know sine 0 is, is 0, so we end up here with 1 times 0 divided by cosine 0 is 1, so it'll be 1 times 1. That will evaluate to 0. Okay? Uh, but uh, like I said, you're going to have to rewrite the tangent squared x as sine squared over cosine squared. Uh, multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. Uh, you've got the sine x over cos sine x over x right there in your fraction. Just kind of rearrange it there. Uh, you really could have worked the problem straight from there. And then just use direct substitution after that. Okay, let's try example number five now. Right, so problem number five. Now we get the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over nine x. So sine x over nine x. Now I know sine x over x would be 1. So if that 9 wasn't there, so I tell you what to do. Let's factor the 9 off. Now you have 1 sine x divided by 9x in the denominator. So uh, let's factor the 9 off. Let's be 1 9th times sine x over x. So pull that, just pull the 9 off. Right, so that gives me 1 9th now times sine x over x. Now sine x over x, okay, this is 1. So we have 1 9th times 1 or 1 9th. So this will be our limit. Okay? And I think we have one more problem. Let's try number number 6. And I, I take a look at this one here. Now, this is what I want to do with this last problem. 
And we have to limit as x approaches 0 of tangent, tangent x over x. We're going to make this our, our guided practice problem. All right, now, you've seen me work several of them. I've done several of them with tangent x in them. So you know what you're going to have to do, uh, kind, of, kind of similar to the ones that we did before. Now, what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video. Uh, I want you to see if you can find the limit as x approaches 0 of tan tangent x over x. And then when you start me back up, I'll go ahead and work it out. We'll compare answers and see if you've got the same answer that I got. So pause the video now. Okay, you should have your answer. So let's, let's see how we go about evaluating this now. So we've got tangent x over x. I need sine x over x. All right, now sine x over x so is, is 1. So uh, let's see if we can simplify this. Now I want to rewrite tangent x as sine x over cosine x divided by x. X by itself, I'm going to write it as X over 1. So once again, we did a problem, uh, one of our other problems very similar to this, except we had tangent squared X. So it's kind of worked kind of similar. Okay, now we've got one fraction divided by another fraction. Let's take the, the top fraction and we'll multiply by the reciprocal of the bottom fraction. So we end up now with sine X over cosine X times 1 over X. Right now I can see sine x on top, x on the bottom, so we're almost there. We end up now with sine x over x times 1 over cosine x. All right, so a little rearranging. Uh, put the sine x over the x and the 1 over the cosine x. Now, sine x over x will simplify to 1. So let's do a, go ahead and substitute 0 in for x now. So this here will uh, simplify to 1. So we have 1 times 1 over cosine 0. Now remember, cosine 0 is 1, so we end up with 1 times 1, or 1. So the limit as x approaches 0 of tangent x over x should be 1. Okay, now there's, uh, when we get in our homework, there's several of these trick problems. You kind of have to know what to watch for. So once again, in review, remember your two special trig functions. The limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x is 1. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine x over x is zero. And that concludes our video for today.